Hey everybody, Mike Expect the Comics, and I'm back. This time, I got a nice stack of books. Well, not too big, but you know, reasonable stack of books that I ended up picking up uh, last week at a nice little honey hole that I, I go to from time to time. If you want to see what cool books I picked up, stay tuned for that intro. Alright, so welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that when I do put out some content, you get it in a timely fashion. So, like I said, I was uh, going to one of my nice honey holes out in uh, uh, Putnam, Connecticut. Jeremiah's, I believe it's called. And, you know, the last few times I've been there, got some pretty sweet books. Had some really good deals. They have some amazing uh, back issue bins and a few wall books, you know, some slabs and uh, what they consider wall books. So um, I ended up doing some uh, some hunting and I got this, you know, small sizable stack, nothing crazy. But um, mainly a, uh, a good chunk of it has to do with uh, Thor. You know, I like to pick up some of these uh, Silver and Bronze Age uh, Thor books, mainly pertaining to the uh, the current Loki series, and then some other future spec books. So, you know, let's start with the first book, and um, this first book is Captain Marvel. This is issue 16, and I want to say this came from the, what is this? This is recent, yeah, two ninety nine cover price. Uh, from 2002 so this is a uh, Captain Marvel series number five and there wasn't many issues I don't believe in this series but um, the two key issues in the series like the more pricier ones is issue 16 and 17 and uh, this is the first appearance of Philo Vell. If you're not familiar with Philo Vell, uh, I believe it's the clone daughter of Captain Marvel and Elysius. So, there is a decent amount of speculation that this character is going to be um, appearing in, you know, in the MCU eventually because you know, Captain Marvel was in the Captain Marvel series. So, um, who knows, who knows, especially with the whole, you know, Kree War coming up. So, uh, that's a cool book to look out for, and it was only $3, so that was a nice pickup, but... Um, you know, uh, I, I like cosmic covers in general, so not even aware that this was key until I had to look this up. But um, cause I saw one of my buddies post this recently, and he was like, "Oh, I, uh, I need an extra copy." And, you know, so I was like, "All right, I'm gonna put this in your little stack of books." So this is gonna go out to him because uh, he's looking for like a nine eight copy. I don't know if this is a nine eight copy because of the whole white and stuff on the sides, but it's possible. So that was the first book. Next book, this has to do a little bit of, uh, you know, Loki and Kang speculation. And this is Avengers number one. This is a four-part series. It says uh, Out of Time, Thunderstrike, War Machine. There's a lot of uh, a little shininess here. Good old 90s shininess. I want to say this came out in 92, 93, 93. Yeah, it says it right there, Gustavich, 93. So, um, there's, a, I think, a few amount of, uh, you know, keys in this, uh, minor keys that have to do with this book. And this is the uh, first appearance of Alia, the supreme being of the time span. And, but more importantly, it's the first appearance of Kang Swatch, Kang Rolex, and Kang Cassia. <laughs> Members of the Council of uh, Cross-Time Kangs. And for two bucks, I had to pick this up. Uh, I'm a big fan of Kang the Conqueror. Um, I read this book. It was actually uh, pretty funny to see the three characters in there to do with the uh, cross-time Kangs. And just to make it even funnier is that they had to name them after three major uh, watch companies, but changed out the actual spelling of the word so they don't get any copyright infringement. So that was, that was uh, pretty interesting to see that. So for two bucks, I had to pick up that book. It's good spec. Um, the next book was actually a from a new comic book day last week, but I only ended up picking up this one book for new comic book day because I didn't think it was that big of a week. 
and this is Geiger number one, and this is the fourth printing. Uh, if you haven't been reading this, it's been an absolutely amazing uh, series, just three issues in so far. Great collaboration between Gary Frank and uh, Jeff Johns and uh, Anderson doing the uh, cover art for some of them. Great read. Can't wait to see where this continues. So uh, I liked it because it was a great, you know, to do this in the fourth printing and be read because of the whole apocalyptic story. I had to pick that up because I didn't pick up previously the uh, second or third printing. But I like that red cover for the four, so I picked that one up, especially for, you know, for cover price. Who knows? I'm pretty high on that series, so it, it's pretty good spec for me, at least. Um, so the rest of these, I believe, are going to be, yeah, they're all four books. So I picked these all up in the back issue bins. A lot of them are pertaining to the current Loki series and upcoming, you know, MCU later, especially with uh, Kang the Conqueror. So uh, some of these are, are picking up some uh, steam right now, so it's a good time to potentially just sell them, and a few of them just to hold on to a little bit later. So the first issue is Thor, issue number 282. I ended up picking this up for uh, $3, and I believe this has to do with the TVA. And um, this is, yeah, the first uh, cameo team appearance of the Timekeepers. Beings with the ability to manipulate time. So the, the timekeepers are going to have a huge role in this Loki series. Uh, if you haven't seen the second episode, we saw that the character or the female Loki, which I think is the Enchantress, uh, did a lot of bombing into the space-time timeline. And she knows where the timekeepers are because of, I believe, C-20 was that TVA uh, uh, character spilled you know kind of spilled the beans and told her where the uh, timekeepers are located so i'm hoping we see some more information on the timekeepers going forward so that's a nice book to pick up uh high grade they're going for like 30 bucks this is a decent copy and i picked it up for three bucks so that's a nice buy um next book this is a nice little copy well, actually no, it's a little bit probably a mid-grade copy but this is uh Four, issue number 245 uh, who knows this is a very interesting spec right here but this is the uh, first appearance of the he who remains the creator of the timekeepers so this could be some spec way out there who knows if this character does show up in the Loki series or not um, but that's really the whole speculation behind this character decent price six dollars it's probably around a mid grade so this is this was a good purchase, and uh, I like the cover art. This is this is some you know really nice. If you're not familiar with this uh, artist, this is Rich Buckler, I believe. Doesn't have his uh, his uh, signature on there, but um, it almost looks like Jack Kirby, but uh, it, I don't believe this is Kirby. I believe this is Buckler. Um, so that that was a cool uh, cool pickup. I like those, like, He Who Remains, the one above all, the one below all, all these, like, way out there characters. So, like I said, I'm big into the cosmic, cosmic realm and the way they're going into Phase 4 and Phase 5. So I, I had to pick that one up. Next book, uh, this is Thor, issue number 239. This is the first team appearance of the, I guess, Heliopians, is how you pronounce it. I could be butchering it, but they're um, ancient Egyptian gods. Horus, Osiris, and Isis. This has nothing to do with Loki, but more importantly has to do with the Moon Knight Disney Plus series. That's all I'm going to say for that. This is going to be an upcoming uh, July top five picks, so look out for those. And if you haven't seen my June top five picks, I'll put that link in below. Check that out. There's some great speculative books in there. So uh, look for this book for July. Uh, ended up picking that up for eight bucks, which is right around the going rate for mid, mid grades. I definitely expect that book to go up. Um, next pickup was, oh, actually, another copy of 282. Has to do with the uh, Timekeepers. And I got this book for three bucks. And this is on a lower side, lower mid grade. Another nice slow pi uh, pickup. So I got two copies of that. I think there was actually a third copy there that I saw in the back issue bin. So a lot of the back issue bins varied from like five to ten dollars, um, five dollar like up to five dollars, and then there was like one dollar, two dollar, three dollar bins. So 
a lot of these books were scattered all over through the back issue bin, so I kept on seeing a lot of these <laughs> Thor series, you know, all over the, um, the comic section. Um, the next book, I'm going to continue with the Thor, and then this is Thor issue number 243. And this is all, you know, pretty close to the TVA, all those, the series there with the 240s. And this has to do with the uh, first team appearance of the Time Twisters. So they're uh, an, impure version, uh, an impure version of the Time Keepers, both beings with the ability to manipulate time. The time, it almost seems like these Time Keepers or like the TVA in general has like some negative, like sinister aspect to it. So I'm wondering if the Time Twisters are going to be showing up in there or whether or not they're being manipulated by the time twisters we'll see because it definitely seems like there's something dark about the TVA and and a lot of these um, TVA agents have been almost like brainwashed into like you know serving the good as they they like to say so uh, we'll see what goes forward especially with episode 3 dropping tomorrow um, got this for around seven bucks eh. Probably a little more than what I wanted to pay for it, but it's in decent shape. And the next book, uh, this is this is like some recent spec as well. I wasn't really, you know, a buyer on that when I uh, when I heard the speculative the speculation on it because this character had already been introduced in a prior Ghost Rider movie, and then this is Ghost Rider from Volume Two. Uh, Ghost Rider issue number two, and this is the first appearance of Blackout. So um, there was a, a show on YouTube that talked a little bit about this. There was some like, you know, scoop that was addressed and brought out, and then all of a sudden this book jumped from like cover price book to like thirty forty dollar book. Uh, I was happy to pick this up for five bucks. It's not bad, um, and we'll see. I, whether or not it pans out, who knows, but this is, you know, a good series. This is a really cool cover and, you know, decent spec going forward. So we'll see. And then the last book, this is early Thor. This is from the Silver Age. I finished, figured I'd finish off with a 12 center to uh, end this video. And this is Thor issue number... 136 and if you're not familiar with this this is a great cover this is Jack Kirby artwork right here and then this is the first appearance of Sif in an ongoing form a little different than the original Sif that was introduced in the I want to say journey into mystery 101 or 102 and if you're not really familiar with it, a Sif is already been confirmed to appear in the uh, Thor number ish uh, Thor Four movie Love and Thunder so she'll be back so uh, this book will you know go back up in, in value if it hasn't already uh, picked this up for eight dollars this is you know this is low grade probably four oh five oh but for eight bucks for like you know a nice early silver age Thor key this is pretty pretty good pickup has a little it looks like a date stamp right there as well but um that was the last book. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Let me know in the con uh, comments down below. Do you have any of these books? Are you looking out for any of these books and going forward? And if you are, comment down below. If you haven't already, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Helps out my channel. Helps out the algorithm and so forth. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I put out some content you know, when I can. Lately, I haven't been putting out as much content as I'd like. It's been crazy the past couple of weeks, but I'm getting back into the grind again. Uh, I just dropped a video, t you know, today, a little short of a cool little Silver Age Batman key that I picked up recently, and uh, just look out for some more content going forward. So until next time, Smart Expect the Comics. Out. <laughs>